Come on, use your fourth copy of Into the Rule. Let's see it. Bounce my dragonkin. Bounce it. Essence scatter. <laughs> oh no. What if we come to in magic to where the opponent fears my mad ratter disease? <laughs> That's fine, I got a backup. You wouldn't think it, but I do. Rats. Oh. Infesting the universe. Rats. Oh. They're gonna bite every one of us. Who let the rats out, ladies and gentlemen? What's up, everybody? My name's Chance, and it's, well, it was me. I, I let the rats out, and I let them all over standard, and they are infesting everything. So we're going to be diving into a rat's deck, if you couldn't pick up on all the rat jokes that I've been dropping. Get it, rat dropping. Anyways, <laughs> this deck includes ye old classic Piper of the Swarm, a card that some of you may literally not even know about, because it came out in Throne of Eldraine, and then never saw any play. Of course, I, I tried it out, because we, we love this kind of stuff. We live for this kind of stuff here on this channel. But uh, aside from that, I, I don't think many other people ever even tried a singular deck with it. So two mana, one, three, rats you control have menace, which, you know, if you have a lot of rats, that's really cool. It means they can all swing in, it's gonna be super hard for your opponent to block, and uh, well, this card can create rats, so essentially you got a never-ending army of menace attackers, right? Which is pretty cool in theory. Furthermore, you can pay four mana, tap this card, sacrifice three rats, and gain control of target creature. Now that's huge given we have things like comas and more from predators running around, right? Because those things, yeah, they get indestructibility, cool. But they don't stop our Piper from straight up stealing them. And obviously that's going to be the goal with the deck here today. So we are also playing two copies of Mad Ratter, this four mana one two that also came out in Throne of Eldraine. And it obviously is a reference to the Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland. Anyways, whenever you draw your second card each turn, whether it be your turn or the opponent's turn, you're going to get to create two 1-1 one, one black rat creature tokens, which of course with Piper you only need three rats in order to sacrifice and gain, blah, 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 and gain control of target creatures. So it, they pretty much work hand in hand, Mad Ratter. It can create four within two turns, or if you have two Mad Ratters down, then you can create four every single turn, which obviously equates to a creature stolen from the opponent every turn, right? <clears throat> Anyways, that's obviously not going to happen every time because, well, you can't just constantly tap this creature and then tap it and tap it and tap it. The opponent's going to eventually catch on and remove it, right? So we have some other ways to make these rats a little more effective, and that's going to be with our shapeshifters. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, because shapeshifters, because these changeling creatures are all creatures, they are also rats. So we have Guardian Gladewalker, rat, Mass Vandal, rat, Gladewalker Rituals, rat, and Realm Walker, which is another rat. <laughs> so if at any point you don't have enough rats based off your Piper and based off your Mad Hatter, but you really want a creature from the foe, you can drop a Glade Walker, you can drop a Mass Vandal, sacrifice them as rats, and still get that creature from your foe, and you're still not losing that much as this is only a two-mana creature. Sure, you're not getting it at the cost of this, you know, little 1-1 one, one token creature. It's still really good value if you're trading your Guardian Glade Walker for the opponent's Coma, right? Anyways, why do I call it Berserker Rats, though? Why is that Berserker card, or Berserker word, rather, slapped on the front? Why isn't it Shapeshifting Rats? Why isn't it, you know, Gruel Rats, or whatever, whatever? Well, the whole reason is because rats, they're good, but what's even better is if you take the rats, you know, your Shapeshifters and all that, and you add a little bit more value to them, even alongside the rats within the same color scheme. What am I talking about? I'm talking about Berserkers, which work so, so wonderfully within the Rakdos color scheme. And of course, if you've got Shapeshifters, they are also Berserkers, which means everything you have that will proc for a Berserker will also proc for your Shapeshifters. Everything you have that will proc for your Rats will also proc for your Shapeshifters. So this is why we have Berserker Rats, ladies and gentlemen. This is why the culmination, the combination has been um, mm, combined. <laughs> Anyways, a new card for us to look at here. We have Skimfar Avenger, which is really good. Two mana, three one, which means it is coming down as a blade. That three one stat line, that's what makes it a blade for two mana, right? Furthermore, whenever another non token elf or berserker you control dies, you draw a card and you lose one life, which means anytime any of your other berserkers, which of course we're going to have other berserkers in the deck, right? Anytime any of them die, you get to draw a card. Anytime any of your shapeshifters die, you get to draw a card. And of course, you get a 3-1 body on the other side of that, so that's really good. If you can get two of these down, well, you're just drawing out the wazoo. You might be a little careful, actually, because you can very easily take yourself out, as a matter of fact. 
Moving us down, we have two copies of Dragonkin Berserker, and this is where the deck gets absolutely nutty. So if making your, you know, your shapeshifters into rats and berserkers and using that to your advantage wasn't enough, we also have this two mana 2-2 two, two human berserker, which reads, first strike, both abilities you activate cost one less to activate for each dragon you control. And as I'm sure you've probably caught on by now, your shapeshifters are also dragons. So creating that 5-5 red dragon creature token with flying actually goes from costing 5 mana to 4, 3, 2, and well, even 1 if you have enough shapeshifters down, which again, the idea is to have more and more creatures down, which you're going to be seeing how we do that in a minute. But you see the point here. We can get these dragons down for very, very cheap. Not only that, this still procs alongside the Berserker stuff, and our Guardian Gladewalker still procs the Rat stuff, still procs the Berserker stuff, and now also procs our Dragon stuff, right? Moving us down, we have one copy of Fearless Liberator. I was mostly testing this card out as an option for budgety people, as I don't have all or more copies rather of Dragonkin and more copies of Magda, which is another great card. It's a Dwarf Berserker, so it does fit into the deck to a degree. And off the back of the Dragonkin Berserker, boast abilities costing less off of number of dragons, can really be useful whenever you have your shapeshifters down, but that's really a whole board state kind of thing, and you should already be winning. So as far as my opinion on Fearless Liberator, it's okay. I don't think it belongs in this deck, so I would recommend if you're going to play this deck, cut that, add in an extra Dragonkin, an extra Skimvar, an extra Magda, an extra Shapeshifter. Literally almost anything else will fill the shoes of this card just a little bit better, right? Moving us down, talking about Magda, we have two copies of Magda Brazen Outlaw. So again, if your Shapeshifter's being Dragon, Rats, Berserkers, and, uh, you know, Elves, I guess, for the Skimvar or whatever, if that wasn't enough... We also have Magda, which is going to give them the benefits of the Dwarves, which is plus one, plus O. Oh. And every time they get tapped, we're going to add a treasure token. So, <laughs> our, our Shapeshifters have the ability to potentially reduce the cost of our boast abilities. Um, tap and add treasure token. Get the plus one, plus O oh ability. Be rats, which can be sacrificed to gain uh, other creatures from our opponent. And have menace due to the Piper of the Swarm. Which, I know, it's a lot, and it seems like none of it works together in conjunction, but if you'll notice, Magda is also a Berserker, which means she ties right back into the Skimfar play and all the other Berserker cards that we're going to be coming up on in our 3 mana drop slot. So, again, it's not actually that far-fetched to add in a Magda and allow her to boost up all of your Shapeshifters just on the rare occasion. I mean, adding an extra damage, creating extra mana... Right? Having the ability to potentially sacrifice five of those treasure tokens to immediately find your Ember Cleave, it's really, really a value that you can't beat for two mana, right? Two copies of Thrill Possibility, in case you're not finding what you want, in case you're finding too many lands or finding too many creatures, vice versa, right? You can always discard at instant speed, draw two cards, it's going to help you proc the Mad Ratter and cycle through some of your not so, you know, usable cards, whether it be early or late game. Guardian Gladewalker, as we mentioned, is a shapeshifter, it's a dragon, it's a dwarf, it's a berserker, it's a, a rat, so it's it's everything you need it to be, and it enters and puts a plus one plus one counter on target creature, which means it can help save a creature from Heartless Act, right? Mass Vandal going to help you deal with artifacts and enchantments the opponent may have, while also, again, coming down and procking your berserks, dragons, rats, and uh, uh, dwarfs cards right <laughs> one copy of shatter skull for some additional removal two copies of blood chiefs deal with either creatures or planeswalkers three copies of cultivate as we are going to need a lot of mana with this deck well not that we'll need it but we'll want it as we'll have so many creatures to play so many boast abilities to play so many things that we can see off the top of our deck and we will be drawing so many cards right so there is a, a good reason for the cultivate if you want to make it a little more lower to the ground take out cultivate and just add in a few more lands where the cultivate would have been because we have reduced some of the lands as cultivate and blood sky massacre should theoretically allow you to hit your land drops more sufficiently that's all up to you. You know, it's a matter of preference. If that's the way you want to play the deck, then go for it. I personally like Cultivate, and so that's why I run it. Gladewalker Ritualist, uh, again, kind of being slept on, but for the three mana card that comes down and is, again, a dragon, dwarf, berserker, and rat, and has all those abilities of the plus one, plus O, oh, adding treasure, having menace, and also drawing you a card whenever a second copy of this card comes down, makes it, well, I think, well worth putting into the deck, and especially if you don't have this card, which is Realm Walker, three mana. Th uh, two, three, changeling, as it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. You're going to be choosing Berserker, as that is the general creature type. Also, it still allows you to grab all your shapeshifters out, so it's perfectly fine if you end up seeing them. 
Furthermore, you can look at the top card of your library anytime. You can also cast the top card of your library if it's a creature of the chosen creature type, which is why you're going to choose Berserker, right? Because it's the most common creature type. Anyways, Blood Sky Massacre. This is a really, really nice card. And if not, maybe one of the only big, big true reasons to play Berserker. So comes down, you get a 2-3 Demon Berserker creature token with Menace cool beans because well menaces makes it a little bit more evasive also it's a 2-3 which means it can't just die to a bone crusher and it can attack in for a whole lot and we'll we'll see additional benefits of this later furthermore whenever berserker attacks on the next step you get to draw a card you also have to lose one life but this is the similar ability of what we saw on skimfar adventure where it's you know manage your life but you're still getting a card advantage and you're only paying one single life for that and potentially creatures so generally it's going to work out well for you so again you're creating the two three then on the very next turn you can swing in with it it already has a little bit of evasiveness and you can draw a card not to mention you also get to draw for all the other berserkers you potentially have on the board which you know shapeshifters and regular berserkers combined can be a lot Finally, the last step, add red mana for each Berserker you control until end of turn. You don't lose this mana as steps and phases end, which means you can get a free Shatter Skull removal out if you have the right number of Berserkers, and again, Shapeshifters count, so adding, you know, 3-4 mana with this card is actually very realistic. So not only are you creating a 2-3 with Menace and adding another Berserker to your tribal, not only are you drawing cards based off the number of times you attack, you're also adding mana, which is insanely good because now if you don't want to cast a Shatter Skull or Thrill or Magda or Mad Ratter, it can help you cast the Ember Cleave because that mana stays through phases. You can swing in and if you gain three mana with Blood Sky, you literally almost have a free Ember Cleave with, with that mana, right? Moving us along, we have one copy of Agademes to help us bring back our creatures. We can draw everything from the four to the true from the four to the two drop slot so we do have a wide range of creatures to grab mad ratter we've talked about of course gaining those two one one black rat creature tokens is really nice with piper and just in general having additional creatures down on the board is fun right Binding the Old Gods going to allow us to destroy target non-land permanent the opponent controls, whether it's an enchantment, artifact, planeswalker, creature, whatever we choose, you know, take it out and then we'll get to ramp a little bit, draw a forest out of our deck, and uh, last but not least, creatures you control gain death touch, which, as I was saying with Blood Sky Massacre, is really, really good because you get this 2-3 with Menace, which has to be blocked by two creatures, and then on the following turn, you can literally play down Binding the Old Gods, take out something of theirs, gain the ramp, and now give your menace creature death touch you can give your first strike creature death touch which is really good and of course you add death touch to amber cleave you only have to assign one point of damage to the first blocker and you get to swing on into your opponent's face so all in all this is a very strong deck given well sort of the premise for it and if you want to make it stronger honestly if you want to make it more efficient and sort of stick with this berserker style theme you can take out the rats berserker rats is fun I'm playing it because I love rats and I love ratty stuff, ratty, crazy, nutty stuff. Um, but if you want to make it a Berserker deck, like literally just take out these two cards and add in some more effectiveness, whether it be removal or whatever. You could probably take out Thrill as well as that was a card pretty much directly aimed at Mad Ratter and that kind of stuff. And then just make it more efficient as far as the Berserker tree goes. Add in more or more dwarves if that's what you need. Add in more instant speed removal. Add in more uh, a great hinge or something, right? This is a very, very solid Jun Berserker deck in and of itself. The fact that you can turn it into a rat Berserker deck alongside with everything else that you're already doing is just icing on the cake for me personally, and I'm sure for any other jank player lover out there in general, right? So thanks everybody for watching all the way through the deck tech breakdown. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like down below. It takes but a quick second. You don't have to even leave the video. You just scroll down and bloop. Anyways, leave a like, leave a comment about one thing you're enjoying about the commentary, whether it be, you know, the deck style or me actually commentating it or the jokes or whatever you're enjoying about the channel. Leave a comment down below. Let me know so we can uh, improve on things that y'all don't mention, right? Furthermore, if you're new here, you want to help support the channel through a completely free means and also probably the most important means, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon as it, one, lets me see that more people are interested in the kind of content that I'm putting out as it does show me the subscriber rate based off videos so I can see, you know, hey, more people like this video because they subscribe because of it, blah, 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 blah. So if you're enjoying the content you see, try to subscribe on that video and then I can tell that that video was a better converting, that editing style was better converting, yada, yada, yada. Anyways, thanks again. Without further ado, let's dive into some Berserker Rat action. Like, everyone's playing creature heavy decks, but everyone's also playing 5 million copies of removal, so it's like, well, you can't really do anything with this. 
Do I have faith that we'll see another land? I mean, you want my honest opinion or you, you want the hopeful one? I'll give you the hopeful one and say, yeah, we're, we're totally going to find a land with by, by turn three. Like, no no way, no possibility are we not going to find another land by turn three. Between the, the flip-floppy lands and our basic lands, I feel like it's uh, inevitable. Now, if I'm speaking of a man with experience on Arena, we could be trying to win this game on two lands. And, you know, hey, it's a Yorion deck, so I feel like this is probably the best uh, potential deck that we could win against with two lands right because if, if they get screwed or something if they if they trip somewhere along the way we can we can use that as an advantage to step on them with the berserker rats all righty long is turn one scry of the century here <laughs> i don't know why everything is of the century i don't know why it can't be of the decade or of the millennial or whatever whatever i guess the century is a long enough time to hold uh Well, I guess I'll go ahead and get down black mana so we can potentially get down to Blood Sky, right? Because Blood Sky can actually draw us more cards. So as Realm Walker, one, we don't have the mana for it, right? Two, um, it's not necessarily drawing you cards unless you can play those cards, and those cards are only creatures. So it's not necessarily helping you to like ramp and find lands and interaction. It's just helping you to pull more creatures out and have a beefier board state, so to speak, right? Um, but it's okay. We're gonna find a land on this next turn. No doubt about it. We're gonna find a land. I'm gonna smash it down It's gonna be untapped might I add and then we're gonna get that blood sky just churning Churning out stuff, right? Come on Come on Vilic. It's only turn two. You got a long game ahead of you if you can't even figure out which land to play or rather, we have a long game ahead of us. Villic is clearly playing with themselves perfectly fine. <laughs> no, we didn't. We didn't hit a land. That's yeah, we, I didn't want to land anyways. I was just saying that because I wanted the game to think that I wanted to land. I really wanted the Gladewalker Ritualist because that is good in 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 the future. Surely. All we have to do is draw that land that we have so evasively dodged so far, and it needs to be green. That's easy. That's so easy. That's not a land either, but but it could equate to a land, and that's what's important to remember. So let's try and attack. Let's see how this goes. I, I think they got a little flash Reno here. They do indeed. Why are you flashing me, bro? That's so rude. You can't just go down the street flashing people. What, 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 what is everyone going to think about you? Smack. Smack. And toss. Give me a land. Nope, no, no land. That's <laughs> two out of our top 11. That's fun. It's real fun. We do have 24 in the deck in case anybody's wondering what the odds are. It's We have 22 out of the last 49 remaining cards. So almost half of our deck is now our lands. It's is what it is. We'll find some eventually. Opponent. Taking their sweet time. <laughs> so what do we do when we find this oh so glorious land? Like If it's green, do we go ahead and go for the Realm Walker? Or do we go for like Blood Chief stars? Oh! Snap! Crackle Plop. We found it. We have foundeth thy land. Let's go ahead and get down Skimfar. How far? Well, Skimfar. Counter magic? You, are, did you see it coming, Villic? No, they didn't see it coming. Wow, I am uh, I am thoroughly, thoroughly surprised. Another Omen still won't take out Dragonkin, so we don't really have to worry about that necessarily. Oh. <laughs> oh. You're one of those players. One of the bouncing players. Four mana, tempo, draw a card players. 
Sorry, but I, I really, really have a hard time getting behind things like Into the Rule. It's so bad. It's so bad. Comparatively, when you when you have things like Brazen that could go on the other side of this, right? Alrighty. So do we want to go for a Realm Walker, have mana for Blood Chiefs, or go for a Dragonkin, have mana for Blood Chiefs, or go for Blood Sky, have mana for um yeah, Blood Blood Chiefs. <laughs> I think we go for the Realm Walker, try and pull creatures off the top of our deck. Oh, sorry. Smacking the mic all around, huh? Come on, Vilik. It should not take you three minutes to resolve every play. Not when you're in Diamond 2? Diamond 3? You know? Berserker. It's a land... So I could go ahead and remove their 1-1, get in 3 with the Skimfar Avenger. I think saving it is better. And who knows, they could just play down another Omen of the Sun here anyway, so. Show me what you got, Vilik. Come on. I know you thought about this during your turn, so now you don't have to think about it. You just play the card. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like a sack of potatoes. Go now, go. It's sad, but... <laughs> oh, it's sad because we're, we we might still lose to this Yorion uh, deck. Just based off the fact that it's Yorion deck and blah, 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 blah. All right, so we definitely block here because they're just going to board wipe us more than likely, right? Like... All right, you got the Doom Scar. Cool. You got the Shatter. Whatever. Show us the money. Show me the money. Come on. There, there, there you go. See, I knew you had it in you. Just a, just a matter of time. Now why? Oh, whenever another. Right. Uh, I was about to say. Now why did it only draw as one card? That's the, the true question to be answered. Because it says all other. All other elves are berserkers. So we need additional red mana here. We will get down the dragonkin on this turn. I think we'll go ahead and get down the magda as well. We could get down the blood sky. But I think I want to build up the berserkers for that. So We still have binding of the old gods. Which means we can still take out a Yorion or whatever we may need. Right? Surely they won't have double board wipe in a row. That's... That's just a crazy notion, ladies and gentlemen. Why would you ever suggest that they would have another Doom Scar? That's so not that's so not fair. <laughs> Alright, well do it if you're gonna do it, Vilik. Come on. Come on. Shouldn't have to talk to you like you're a dog, but damn, my dogs follow better than this. <laughs> You got six cards, limited possibilities. And you're playing a Yorion deck too, which means like you, you have time. The whole idea of control decks is that you can, you can play slow. You should make your moves fast because you have all the time in the world to think about them, but you can play slow theoretically. All right, well, let's see if we can't attack. Attack! Oh my goodness, I'm so surprised. It's another end of the rule. How many of these things have you already cast? Three? You've cast three into the rules. You're a fucking goon. You know that? You're you're actually just a goon. <laughs> Three into the rules, all kicked. All right, Blood Sky Master is gonna come down. You're gonna play your Omen because, well, you're an obvious Andy. Come on, resolve and play your Omen. God dang it, I shouldn't know your plays before you. And I can only see one card in their hand. That's what's really sad. And look, you did it. You did it. Do you want to use another enter the rule on my Blood Sky Masker? That'd be cool. 
I would give you props for having four within the top X cards. Sorry, ring smacking on the desk. <laughs> All right. Land, land came down. You know, that's normally Villick's biggest problem with playing this game is deciding which land to come down. So theoretically, the rest of the turn should go smoothly, right? Just easy peasy. Yep, there's Shark Typhoon. And the ye olde and birth of Militai. And I think they're planning on playing that Yorion, Boreon, Snorion come next turn. So we go binding and probably blood chiefs i want to get down the mad ratter so we can draw the rat or draw the cards and spawn the rats don't get me wrong but obviously this is the play that we need to do so yeah goodbye my friend and good luck so we take out these two we can still swing with those two perfectly fine don't want to swing with magda i don't think yorion's gonna bounce that that's all fine all right Draw, 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 draw. Another Mad Ratter. Fine by me. We'll get it down eventually. Yep. Bam. They should go back to 18 when they play down their, uh, their Yorion here. Of course, they could also board wipe since I sort of just dealt with everything they had. And Well, you know these Yorion players, if they don't have two board wipes in the top 20, 30 cards, then something is wrong with the math of their deck. So let's see it. Let's see that shatter, baby. Yeah, man. If they don't shatter, we are going to gain a, a lot of mana to get down some free mad ratters, which I'm excited for. If we can find some potential card draw, then, hey, we're getting these rats out and about, and uh, I'll be happy about it. Can't speak for them, but, uh, you know. I guess we could have also just created a dragon with the Dragonkin Berserker there, but taking out Shark Typhoon was definitely a high priority. So... All right, here's the thing, Villick. If you have board wipe, you should do it now and save your Yorion for later. If you don't have board wipe, you should use your Yorion. Mirius Call. All righty. Indestructibility, 2-0, or 1-0-4, sorry, and two 1-1s. They should swing in with the 1-1 there, for sure, because Magda's not going to block, obviously, but uh, whatever. Grab some additional black mana here, and we're just drawing more, more mana, more mana. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. All right. So that's one Mad Ratter. Now we can swing in with Dragonkin. And create a 5-5, five five, which can block the Angels. Something to be said for that. Come on. Use your fourth copy of Into the Rule. Let's see it. Bounce my Dragonkin. Bounce it, you monkey. Bounce it. Essence scatter. <laughs> oh, no. What if we come to in magic to where the opponent fears my mad ratter disease? <laughs> That's fine. I got a backup. You wouldn't think it, but I do. Next turn, Binding is going to give us Death Strike, or Death Touch, sorry, so we can and should swing in with our Menace and our First Striker, all that kind of stuff, right? Whew. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a Mad Rat or Essence Scattered. That's, uh, one, it's a great ROM. Um, two, it's, it's just funny in theory. Someone's like, oh no, don't let that Mad Rat or hit. You never know what they could do with those rats. They could be everywhere. Have you ever dealt with a rat infestation? They pop up and they start, you know, start going at it quicker than bunnies. All right, Villick. Veloskian, swinging in with your angels, not doing anything else. It's amazing how long you take to do nothing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Yorion, Boreon, Snorion, to try and Entrorion their victory that makes sense makes a whole lot of sense agodemes what are you gonna do for me agodemes we got a realm walker we got a mad ratter we got a glade walker ritualist and we got a fearless liberator 
So I could cast this and grab one, two, three, four. Yeah, let's just do that. I don't think we're gonna win, but this will be fun. I think four is everything we have, right? Yeah. All right, so four, three, two, one, auto pay. Auto, auto pay. This thing. <laughs> GG. That's a. <laughs> we're, we're trying rats tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Berserker rats. The best kind. The foaming at the mouth, rabid, rabid filled rats. That's what we're here for. Yes, siree. All right, Mitch, I get to go first. We're gonna keep this hand because we do have the Magda and, uh, you know, Piper right here off the Ripper Rooney. Honestly, I value the Magda a little bit more than the Piper. Um, I know we're a Berserker Rats deck, but there's, you gotta have the setup for the Piper or you're you're just playing down a 1-3 that can potentially do something for you in the future or it could potentially cost you all of your mana and the game. So we're not going to do that. Instead, I think we do go ahead and drop the Fabled here for some red mana so we can guarantee that Magda can come down on turn two without any sort of hiccups uh, with affecting our red mana that can come off of the Blight Step or black mana that can come off the Blight Step. You know, we, either which way we decide to play that card. So opponent shouldn't have anything else to play here, which means we can... Go ahead and use our Fabled. Ye old and Fabled. Another Fabled, that's fine. That puts us to four mana evenly, which, you know, binding is four mana, so that's cool. We're probably going to go for the Blood Sky Massacre on our next turn if we can manage it, because it does give us another creature. On the next turn, we can swing in, potentially draw two cards for the cost of only two lives. Two lives? <laughs> They're going to take our Piper. Ha <laughs> ha, joke's on you. I don't have a cool big creature. I have a Piper. Take that, Mitch. Take that and smoke it in your your Valky God of Lies pipe. All right, so enough of attacking the opponent verbally. It's time to attack them physically, or you know, on a on a game. So digitally, I guess, is a better way to say that. Now, if Magda swings in, we do get that extra little token, that extra little token Reno. We'd also get our Piper of the Swarm back. I think we're gonna go for it. Give me that token. Give me that Piper back. If you want to trade out Valky for it, sure. If not, hey, free two damage and a free token. Which means on our next turn, we could potentially grab Black Man with Fable Passage and use Agadeems if we just so please to grab nothing. But, you know, the, the, the potential is there. It's about what you can do, not what you, you will do. Or something like that. So Guardian Gladewalker is actually another Berserker we could throw down on the field, but we also have this Binding the Old Gods that we kind of want to use. Of course, if we swing in with the Magda, we do get to uh, we get to do some additional stuff. So what do I want here? Additional green, I think, but we do have that over there, so maybe I do want the additional black to set ourselves up for the Agademes. Of course, Binding is going to allow us to draw some additional lands out as well here. So we play Binding. Well, I feel like we should swing in first, right? We should attempt to swing in first, I should say that. Draw thy cards, Magda. This is also a great way to find your Ember Cleave and, uh, well, play it, right? Because if we would have found it here, we definitely have enough mana to play it here because of the additional treasure tokens. Unfortunately, not going to be the case here. Our Magda is just going to get taken out. But that's okay, we got the card draw, you know. <laughs> they turn it into a, a Piper of the Swarm at the last minute. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. So we're going to uh, we're going to binding the old gods here, and I'll show you show you how it's done, Mitch. Not a bad plan there, though. Not a bad plan at all. So do I just get the piper down and let the rats do their thing in the future? Or do I go ahead and get the berserker down, and we can add that red mana come next turn? I think the red mana is a little more valuable, but honestly, maybe Glade Walker is is the most valuable there. So let's just get down the Glade Walker, yeah. We also could have used Agademes, but again, we only have one creature over here. We could have saved the treasure token for future Agademes use, I suppose. Another Valky. Sure. <laughs> sure. I like how frequently this card comes up nowadays. 
It's it's the new Bone Crusher. It is the new Bone Crusher. All right, so binding. Go looking for a forest. Thank you, thank you. Now Dragonkin comes down for free thanks to the Blood Sky Massacre, right? Or Faceless Liber Fearless Faceless. Oh, that sounds gruesome. Fearless Liberator also comes down for free if that's what we so choose. I think I want to get the Dragonkin down, right? Because it already costs a little bit less thanks to our Guardian here. Do, 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 do. Now I can either go ahead and get down a Fearless or set ourselves up for the Agademes in the future. And I think setting ourselves up for the Agademe in the future is probably the better play. So we will grab additional black mana here and I think additional red mana. Because again, if we see another binding, um, you know, we can grab the other forest with that. So we should try to avoid playing that. Anyways, hitting that additional land off the Cultivate is going to allow us to also get down the Fearless, which I wasn't really thinking about, but I will certainly take, right? Flood that board. Now we can swing in with the Guardian. They don't have the mana with which to turn that into the Piper, so we can actually swing in with everything here, which is fantastic, right? Just get them. Hit them and get them. So we got our Berserkers down. We have one Dragon Dwarf Berserker rat thing on the, build, on the board. <laughs> Creatures you control gain Death Touch. If only we had a Finn, am I right? Opponent would be like, oh no, I don't know what to do with my face hole. So we're going to try and use this boast ability, yeah? Let's see how they block first. Of course, we can take out the Valky with Dragonkin. Or even if they switch it to the Piper, it's not going to take out our Dragonkin. So that's fine. It could take out the Fearless Liberator, but that's not a big deal. They could create a rat, I suppose, if they tap it. But they can't tap it and block and create a rat all in one fell swoop, so... You know what I mean? You're just creating a rat here. So that 1-1 one, one goes to the Fearless, and I create the dragon! <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, we can also create you. Right? Because you... Hold up, what do you, what do you do? You make all boast abilities. That's why that one costs so much less. Because we created the dragon, and we had this dragon, so it caught... Yeah! Beautiful, beautiful. So we lost a unit, but we really also gained two units off of losing that unit. It's, it's <laughs> so who saw that one coming? Not I, not this guy. No siree. They're going to exile our board state. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> marvelous, marvelous. And unfortunately, the only creatures we have over here are two two mana drops, so we can't really do anything with that either. We did get our Piper of the Swarm back, so we can start creating rats, but uh, they're also going to Tormold's Crypt our graveyard here and exile everything, so that's, that's fun. That's something I get to look forward to. They don't. Why not? I guess because they could do it at instant speed, right? Tell you what, Mitch, you got it. Good game. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I like the look of this one. Yeah, I mean, I I did too. But, and Designated Rob going to be our next foe. And uh, a little bit of a yikes on our hands, but we'll keep it because we have the Gladewalker Ritualist and we do theoretically have the mana to get there. So we'll see if we, well, can't get there. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And we've kept worse hands than this. So that's, that's fine. It's a Lotus deck. It's Lotus Rogues. Yeah, classic. Classic. El Classic Arena. Alright. Obviously, you take out the Ruin Crab as soon as you can. That thing's annoying no matter which way you splice it, slice it, and dice it. You would be French. That is a French flag, right? This this is the flint the the flinch flag? The French flag? I believe it is. Ba -da, ba -da, da -da. Nothing against you if you're French, by the way. Y'all know me. I just like to, I just like to trash talk. Okay. Unfortunately, I feel as though I may have to say that every video. I like to trash talk. It's a warning. Don't get your butt hurt. Embercleave. We only have one card in our in our graveyard. Hey, we could uh, we could potentially do something here. Do a little something. 
I kind of want to get down the Gladewalker Ritualist. I'm not even going to lie, just draw us a card. But I'm also kind of wanting to just swing in with this Gladewalker and assume that they can't somehow magically immediately remove it. They don't. Hey, hallelujah. Let's go, Gladewalker Ritualist. Number O dose. Then we can get down Blood Sky. Of course, Blood Sky will give us another Berserker. Come the second. Oh, saw it coming. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Bastard. Now you have the removal. Now you have the removal. Well, of course, why not? I mean, you are playing a Lotus deck, so why wouldn't you have, you know, just, just the answers? Every which... Every which way. Oh, I'm having such a fun time playing against rogues. Not doing anything. 2-3 Demon Berserker, go! I'm sorry, you're probably going to get removed this turn. Lord knows they top decked the, the removal they needed. Thieves Guild, sure, sure, sure. Continue on. Lotus, wow, you actually tapped all out. Oh no, there it is. <laughs> I'm sorry, there it is, Fable. They wanted that for the Ruin Crab, I can tell. I can feel with the delay that they played that. They wanted that for the Ruin Crab. Well, that's unfortunate. Life is unfortunate though, huh? So if I go to play the Binding, they definitely just play down their other Thieves Guild, right? So let's just swing in with this little 2-3 blah 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 blah. Draw a card. We do have mana for the, the Ember Cleave if I want it. Deal 6 puts them down to 11, but it does take our entire turn. I think we're just going to deal the damage. And we're going to drop Skimfar and the uh, the Realm Walker while we have the ability to just drop stuff like, like flies, right? Piper of the Swarm will give Menace to our Realm Walker if we can get it down on the next turn. And again, we do have Embercleave in hand that we could potentially play for pretty cheap. We're getting to the point where we might actually be able to come back and get these rogue bastards if they just tap their mana a few more times. You know what I mean? So they definitely have... They... I guess definitely could have had mana for Rune Crab, but whatever. Now, does this mana... You don't lose this mana, so that's really good. That would have been a free Embercleave. And you know what? Designated Rob, they're just scooping it out. They don't even give us the satisfaction of beating them. 